Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we will use a demo project to explain how to develop a project on the Plus One software platform. The project we are going to use is Skid Steer Loader, which is suitable for the frequent change of work objects and small workspace occasions. And first, let's take a look at the hardware we used in this project. We used two TMT400FLV motors and two MPT46 pumps in prepare part. We used ECU80 valve and SMP348 gear pump in work function part. As well, we have two GS7000 joysticks and MC50 controller. In this project, we need two operation mode, edge mode and ISO mode. On the edge mode, speeds and directions of the left and right wheels are controlled respectively by y-axis of left and right joysticks. X-axis of left joystick controls the pump to move up and down. X-axis of right joystick controls the bucket to move up and down. On the ISO mode, y-axis of left joystick controls the speed and directions of the machine. X axis of left joystick controls the steering of the machine. At the same time, you should have the ability to do inner and after diameter steering. The rack switch on the left joystick is used to change operation mode. The address of left joystick is hex 90 and the right joystick is hex 93. Let's look at prepare part. Controller receives signals from joysticks to the calculation and the processing, and outputs the signals to control the plate angle of pumps. In order to control the flow speed to achieve the purpose of controlling the motor speed and direction, so that implements the forward, backward, and the steering movement. As for the work function, controller calculates and processes the input signals from joysticks to control the ECU80 valve so that implements the movement of boom and bucket. Let's look at the electrical drawing. Input side. Two joysticks are connected to the CAN0 bus. Engine speed sensor is connected to the pin C1P23. Output side. Boom up, bucket up, boom down, bucket down. Left pump reverse, left pump forward, right pump reverse, and right pump forward. Connect to the pins C1P37, 38, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Avoid the brief introduction of this project. Next, we open guide and look at the program. DAF's official software template is used in this project. Its structure is very clear and the layer is very reasonable. Each page has the specific function and there is a detailed explanation. You can also download and install it from Update Center. Next, we will go through every page. We start with Interface In. Inside this page, we connect all the signals which will be used in this application to members and give them meaningful names according to the electrical drawing. In the interface out page, we do the same. Take the output pins we will use from hardware out bus and give them meaningful names according to the drawing. Then we enter input page. Input page provides additional input signals and interprets input signals. Input page contains five sub pages: utilities, configure, can rx, interpret, and error handle. In Utilities page, it presets a startup signal, which is set to true in the first two seconds since power up. It can be used to show the faults that occur immediately after power up. In Config page, it contains two subpages, Parameter and Define. In Parameter page, you can define all the configurable parameters that are used in this application. Parameters can be written in service 2. In this application, we set parameters for prepare, boom, and bucket, and place them in these three subpages. In prepare page, we set acceleration and deceleration time for pump command. 
In boom page, we set a maximum and a minimum current for valves of pump up and pump down. In bucket page, we set a maximum and a minimum current for valves of bucket up and bucket down. In define page, you can define constant values. In this project, we set the teeth number of engine gear, which is used to calculate the engine speed. In can RX page, we use two compliance blocks to receive messages from joysticks. This compliance block can be found in hardware tab on the HMI group. As we mentioned before, the address of the left joystick is hex 90, right is hex 93. Using this hardware compliance block, we can easily receive signals we need. We connect the signal to the subbus and give them meaningful names. At the same time, we use the startup signal to show the faults occur in the moment of power up. In the interpret page, you can interpret raw input signals like frequency into meaningful units like IPM. In this application, we use the compliance block to calculate engine speed. It can be found in hardware tab on the sensor frequency group. Original signal from speed sensor is frequency value. After this block, we get IPM value. In the error handle page, we can list all possible faults and assign them error codes. There are three subpages. In the record page, every fault is assigned an error code. At the same time, a disable signal will be sent out when a fault occurs. In the array build page, we create two empty arrays used to store error locations and error codes. And the two arrays are updated every loop. In the disable page, a disable signal is given to shut off the association action according to the requirements. After introducing the input page, let's look at the application page. It contains the logic of call application function. In this application, we have prepare function and work function. We place them in these two subpages. To control the length of this video, we will only go through the prepare page. Inside the prepare page, there are two subpages, joystick map and rep control. The function of joystick map is to switch operation mode and calculate the values from joysticks to output commands for left and right pumps. The function of rep control is to select acceleration and deceleration time depends on different machine status. Enter the joystick map page, you can see there are two subpages, enable logic and dual path. Inside enable logic page, from the code here, it can be seen that when lock is true, enable will be false, machine will be locked down and this time. The moment the controller is powered up, if joysticks are not in neutral position, enable will be false. It can only be set to true after joysticks return neutral position and hold for 0 0.1 second. Also, the moment the controller is powered up, if joysticks are not in the neutral position, operation mode is not able to be changed, need joysticks return neutral position and hold for 0 0.1 second. Let's return previous page. You can see that when the enable signal is false, the four output signals will be set to zero. When the signal H mode is true, left and right commands are directly connected to the Y axis of two joysticks. When H mode is false, it means machine is under ISO mode. Left and right commands are connected to the outputs of page dual path and its input are connected to the X and Y axis of left joystick. Let's enter the dual path page. The input signals prepare and steer are from left joystick, Y and X axis. There are three subpages here. Pivot scale DB, left and right. Input signals of pivot scale DB page including steer, pivot point, and pivot deadband. The function of this subpage is to set the critical point for outer diameter steering and the inner diameter steering. Let's enter this page and see how that works. On the top left, we take the absolute value of steer. After that, its range is converted to from 0 to 10,000. Then it is divided into two parts. 
from zero to pivot point minus half of the band, and from pivot point at half of the band to ten thousand. Assume we set pivot point to five thousand, pivot the band to one thousand, from zero to four thousand and five hundred, and from five thousand five hundred to ten thousand. Then we get the new range after scale components from zero to ten thousand, from ten thousand to twenty thousand. The point of ten thousand is the critical point of outer diameter steering and inner diameter steering. The pages left and right are almost similar. Let's take a look at the left page. Input signals are steer, diff, and prepare. Diff is used to increase the steering angle. Output signal controls the speed of left side. In the left page, we can see the code on the top. I have already listed the formulas and the chart below. It's not difficult to understand the function of this page is to calculate the command according to the values of steer and prepare. If steer equals zero, then left command equals to right command. It means machine goes straight. If absolute value of steer is in the range from zero to 10,000, left side and right side have different speeds, but have the same direction. It means machine is in the outer diameter steering status. If absolute value of steer equals 10,000, then one side speed will be zero. If absolute value of steer is in the range of from 10,000 to 20,000, left side and right side have different speeds and different directions. That means machine is in the inner diameter steering status. If absolute value of steer equals 20,000, then left side and right side have same speed but different directions. That means machine is in the center rotate status. Back to the dual path page. When the value of prepare is zero, but value of steer is not zero, the input value of pivot scale dB is 10,000. The value of prepare is from steer. Combined with the understanding of these three subpages, it's not difficult to know that values of left and right commands are same, but directions are different. That means machine is in the center rotate status. Then let's go back to prepare page. After joystick page, we get the prepare command. Next, in the rep control page, we add ramp time for left and right pump commands. Inside the RAM control page, there are three subpages, state machine, and two compliance blocks, time ramp. It can be found on the field library. Here we rename it left ramp and right ramp. We explained a similar block called soft ramp in previous video. If you would like to know more information, please watch this video. Number 89 function blocks. The input signals of state machine page include parameter, feedback, and command. In parameter bus, it contains the acceleration and deceleration times that we preset in config page. In feedback bus, it contains the control commands after time ramp function block. So the signals have a time delay. We can use them to analyze the current machine status. In the command bus, it contains control commands before time ramp block. So we can use them to analyze the next machine status. In summary, the function of this page is to know the current and the next machine status, like forward, reverse, and rotate. Then select a specific acceleration and deceleration time for different machine status. In the application page, we develop the core functions, calculate and process the input values to get the expected signals. Next, let's enter the output page. It contains four subpages. The function of output drivers page is to convert application output values to hardware output formats. CAN TX page is used to transmit messages to CAN bus. The function of error indication page is to manage error history records, error numbers, and blind codes. The function of diagnostic page is to route signals to checkpoints. 
Inside the Output Drivers page, we can see there are four subpages. There are compliance blocks designed for pumps and valves we used in this project. You can find them on the hardware tab, Pump and Valves group. Let's take a look at the left pump. The input side contains power supply, feedback A, feedback B, setup, enable, and the command input. These pins, power supply, feedback A, and feedback B are connected as drawn. Setup is empty because we use constant components inside the config data page. Here we set threshold current and end current. Command input is connected to the signal's left command that we got after time ramp. Output side, we connect out A and out B to the left forward and the left reverse, and connect the fault to the fault bus. Considering the video shouldn't be too long, I'm not going to explain in detail. If you want more information, you can check the corresponding menus. Because there is no message to be sent out to the campus in this project, we will skip CAN.TX page. In error indication page, there are three subpages, error number, error history, and error blind code. The three pages are used to assign fault code, record error history, and indicate errors via controller LED or other external indicators. In diagnostic page, we can place all the checkpoints here for easy management. So this has been a quick look and an example of developing a project in guide. We hope that you have found this useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One Help Desk. Thank you for your attention.